Hello and welcome to Let's Make Treks. In this video, we'll be taking a good look at Hornby's TT120 A1 Pacific, the Flying Scotsman. Okay, so here we have the Flying Scotsman all ready to go. So let's just uh, crack her open. Put it to one side. So these are pretty much the same as normal Hornby boxes. So there we go. So class A1, A3 and A4 um, all share the same working chassis. So those will come in useful. Obviously I've had this model for some time. So this bit here is pretty much just for the show. You'll have to forgive me. So here we go. My flying Scotsman model. So let's pop her on the um, let's pop her in the light box, and we can take a better look. Right here on the light box, we have flying Scotsman wearing the livery that she would have had in 1924 at the British Empire exhibition at Wembley. The boiler band lining has been nicely applied. And this also carries through to the underframes where the lining has been picked out in red also. I have applied the detail bag to the front buffer beam. So we have the coupling hook, the drain cocks on the cylinders and the vacuum pipe. There is no coupling or NEM pocket available for the front bogey of this locomotive. So double heading and tender first heritage workings are not possible moving back on the locomotive to the cab end the interior detail has been picked out nicely the tender is of the gresley great northern design so obviously no corridor and all the uh, internal detailing has been molded very nicely as well the locomotive number on this version of the flying scotsman is presented on the tender along with the letters l and er with the crest on the cab side at the rear end of the tender, we've got uh, a NEM pocket for any NEM compatible coupling you may have. And the only piece of detailing from the bag is the brake pipe attached. The locomotive from buffer beam all the way back to the tip of the rear coupling measures in at just about 19 centimeters. From the locomotive's widest point, which I make the valve gear, it measures in at 2.5 centimeters. So with this in mind, you need to leave a good few millimeters between the edge of your sleepers to the platform, taking into account uh, the overhang from the platform edge as shown here. Flying Scotsman weighs in at 141 grams. Overall, I'm very pleased with the aesthetics of the locomotive. This is a perfectly good representation of Flying Scotsman as she was in 1924. So let's get the model down onto the layout and then we can do the running in. So I feel like I should point out, I've owned the Flying Scotsman model for several months now. So any blemishes you may have seen under the light boxes are my doing and it doesn't affect the quality of the model that you may receive. Right, so the manufacturer 
or any manufacturer, recommend that you run your locomotives in 30, uh, in 34, 30 minutes in each direction. So for a little bit of fun, I'm gonna toss a coin, see which direction we go first. So I've got two coins. Bristolian and the Mallard, and these are from the Great British Station's Discovery Tours. If anyone knows where I can get more of these coins, please let me know, because I'd be very interested. Right, so I'm going to use the Mallard, purely because I feel it's appropriate. It's a cousin to the Flying Scotsman, and uh, obviously a fellow Nigel Gresley design. So here we go. Oh, pants. But did land. I'll do it again. That is fair. Right, so we have a hit. So Scott's going to be running forwards. So I feel like I should have a little green flag or something. Maybe next time. So uh, there'll be a magic land with a vegetable somewhere. So uh, right away. So that's the running in complete. So you would normally do this for fresh out the box models, but obviously I've had Flying Scotsman for a while, but for the sake of the video, did it anyway. So what's next is the strength of the locomotive. So what I've devised is a small machine to measure the pulling power of all my locomotives. So Scotsman is obviously gonna be the first. So, may I present to you the Newtometer. So how this works, got your locomotive here, attach it to the pulley there, it's attached to the ball on the other end, and that force will give us a reading in Newtons, which I should be able to convert into pulling power. I think Mark 1 coaches is the best way forward for that one, but um, I don't have enough Mark 1s to get a reading of thing. I have eight carriages right now, and they're still giving me a reading of zero. So for the moment, we're just going to have to deal with the Newton readings rather than an actual number of coaches. So let's get Flying Scotsman up on the Newton meter, and we'll give her a spin. Okay, so the meter reading comes in at 0 0.28. So as I've said, I can't confirm the maximum pulling power of Flying Scotsman at the moment, but what I can confirm is that Scotsman can comfortably pull eight carriages without issue. So, for the moment, that makes Fine Scotsman uh, the champion, my strongest locomotive so far. Obviously, being the first, uh, this may or may not last, but either way, for now, there we go. Okay, so the only reasonable thing I have left to check is the crawl, I suppose. So, let's stick it in reverse, see how slow we can go. That's not too bad. And forwards. 
a little bit better forwards. That's not too bad at all. Okay, so I've set up a train for Flying Scotsman, the uh, Pullmans that came with her in the bundle. So I'm going to send her round and back down onto the train to see how she couples up. Okay, slowly, slowly. There we go. That's how you do it. And away we go. So thank you for watching my look at the TT120 Flying Scotsman. If you like what you see and you want to add a Flying Scotsman of your own to your collection, there is an affiliate link down below in the description. The link won't cost you any extra than normal, but it does go a long way to assist in the channel. Thank you very much, and I will see you again next time. Bye. -bye.